That's right. It is a blow to moral relativism because they basically say that what's right and wrong um, is entirely down to the culture you happen to be raised in and that there are no moral universals. But I think that's wrong. And uh, in fact, we have some pretty strong evidence that that's wrong. And it stems from our efforts to test a theory of morality as cooperation that was pioneered by my friend and colleague Oliver Curry, uh, who um, noticed that there are at least seven rather distinct types of cooperation across the natural world. They're predicted by games theory. So you can sort of, um, you can see why these forms of cooperation could have evolved. Um, and the question is, are those seven forms of cooperation that are widespread uh, across the, the different kinds of social species out there um, also present in human societies and valued as morally good? That's the key question. They are help your kin, so take care of your family members, uh, be loyal to your group, um, reciprocate favours, so return gifts and that kind of thing, be courageous or brave, um, defer to superiors, share things fairly, um, and respect other people's property. I think that's that makes seven. These are principles um, of cooperation, right? But the question is, are they judged morally good in all human cultures. And to uh, answer that question, uh, Oliver and I, together with one of my uh, uh, students, um, Dan Mullins, um, examined a huge literature, uh, uh, a huge body of ethnographic writings. I think there were more than 400 uh, books and articles that we uh, perused looking for um, examples of these seven types of cooperation. And in each case, we wanted to know, are those forms of cooperation judged morally good or bad or neutral? And we had a sample of 60 societies that represented as best we could the kind of diversity of all human cultures or extant existing human cultures around the world. And this generated nearly a thousand instances of moral judgments with regard to these seven types of cooperation. And what we found was that in something like 99.9% .9 of all cases, yes, the answer was these forms of cooperation were judged morally good, not bad or neutral, but morally good, suggesting that there is indeed a sort of universal uh, moral compass, if you like, a set of rules that we all agree are morally right everywhere. Well, the relationship to religiosity is not um, inevitable. Um, there are some points of contact where I think actually uh, these seven principles of cooperation are relevant to the way that we interact with the world of the supernatural, if you like. So, for example, in our interactions with supernatural beings, with ancestors and gods and uh, spirits, I think these seven cooperative principles frequently come into play quite naturally and easily. Um, however, I don't think there's anything automatic and natural about the idea that the gods and ancestors would care about the morality of human behaviour, that they would care very much about how we treat each other and whether that behaviour is moral or not. That's something that emerged late in the evolution of, comp of, of social complexity. Um, but uh, so it's not something that you get for free, as it were, by virtue of having the kind of psychology that we have. But there are some kind of things that are connected up between the sort of world of morality and the world of supernatural uh, thinking that I think uh, do emerge very early in development and may well be part of our evolved psychology. For example, the idea that um, supernatural beings should be socially dominant. So this is about deference. This is about the rule that you should uh, respect uh, people who are in a superior position socially. Mm -hmm.